Welcome back to the Football Debate Show. Of course, we're all here talking through Greater Manchester football topics, but if you want to get involved, it's today at channelm.co.uk. We'd love to have your emails and, of course, read them out as and when we get them. This, you know him already, it's Ian. This is Ollie Wilson, that's Simon Mullock. He's from the Sunday Mirror, he's from the BBC. Talking about Manchester City tonight, if they beat Blackburn in the top four. Now, that top four looked as though it was ring fence for a number of years, but Liverpool at the moment, all but a spent force. So City, realistic aspirations to the top four. I just don't think they can... Re I just think it's, the ladder is just too high for them this top four. season. No, sorry, for the, for the top of the Premiership. No, I think I'm it's talking top four, because Liverpool yes, aren't yes, going to be there, top four, I think they could do it. I think they are looking on form, and like I say, the new team have gelled really well. I mean, Mancini, it's still early days, though, so don't get too far ahead of yourselves. We're but playing it's... Blackburn, Ollie. Tell him, Simon. Well, if they can't beat Blackburn, they, they won't finish in the top four. They, you know, that was a problem yeah. with Mark Hughes. They couldn't beat Hull, they couldn't beat Burnley, they couldn't beat Fulham, and that was why Mark Hughes lost his job. Mm. I mean, you know, this is a... This is a game that City should be winning and, and winning comfortably. I think they will win. I mean, I think it'll be a 2 0 or something like that tonight. Well, it's a I good think... indicator because United in the pomp sometimes against the lesser sides didn't necessarily play at the best, but still won. They always got over the line. And City haven't done that in some of the games against the lesser lights this time out. That's right. I mean, listen, I think City will do top four this season. and... and I don't think we can compare them to Manchester United because United are a team like no other and, and, and we can win and lose daft matches that we, sh that we should be losing and winning in opposites. And I think, I think City have got it. I think, I think they will do top four. But let's see how Mancini does. It's still early days. And, um, but I think they should be all right tonight. Although the, it, won't, it won't be a walkover. I'm not saying that. But. The, the one thing that the top teams have got that nobody else has got is that they can beat teams on reputation alone. You saw Wigan go to Old Trafford the other week and they were beaten before they went on the pitch. And that's the thing, when you, you've been a top club for years and years and years, you build this aura up about you. United have, have got it, Arsenal have got it, Chelsea have got it, Liverpool have, have lost it this season. Sometimes you beat yourself with that aura, though. As a United fan, I think sometimes United teams turn up to the ground, we're Manchester United, and they've not thought the game through. So, yeah, it does win some matches before you've got there, but vice versa. You've lost it sometimes because you've just taken, taken it on a roll and you've not really thought the game through. Whereas I think City will be thinking really, really hard about every move they make. And that's perhaps why they've got the edge on some of the other clubs. Right, we'll come back to United in more detail a little bit later. But one of the great stories, and I'll throw it at used to this one yeah. this week, was the decision by Owen Coyle to move from Burnley to Bolton. And he'd already turned down Celtic, Simon. So what was that about? Because I think to most journalists, and certainly the way it's been reported, it's seen more of a sideways move rather than an upwards move. Is that yeah. fair? I, um, I think Bolton are a bigger club than Burnley. So in, in terms of that, I think it's... it's a but step. not that much bigger, are they? Not that much bigger. But obviously he's got a connection with, with Bolton. He played for the club. Maybe if it was a, a, a club of, another club of a similar stature, he wouldn't have gone. Maybe he's just got this connection with, with Bolton that he, he felt that he couldn't, he couldn't reject. What about you, Ian? What did you make of that move? Um, it was an interesting one, like we, we said in the break as well, we were talking about it. I, I think it's the fact that, like you say, he has got this affinity with Bolton. Uh, it could also be the fact that they are slightly more established than Burnley are. I'd say that the ground is probably uh, better, they, they have better training facilities, that sort of thing. And Perhaps he just sees more potential in Bolton than he does at Burnley. You've got the Phil Brown factor, whereas Phil Brown took Hull into the Premier League, yeah, made did. a fantastic start, it fell away, his, his uh, reputations suffered because of that, whereas... Owen Coyle's had a similar situation. He's got them into the Premier League when perhaps you wouldn't expect Burnley to be there. Made a, a good start at home especially. Then perhaps he thinks he's taken them as far as he can, but he thinks he can take Bolton further. I certainly like the way he talks because he said today, when you become a manager, if you're successful, you move on. I know it's And that, if, you, yeah. <laughs> if you're not it's successful, clever. you get moved on. You think, oh, I like that, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah, and that's the attitude I think you need to have as a football manager. We've got a, we can hear from him now actually, and he's uh, he's saying that when he's unveiled as a new manager now, he thinks that it's been a difficult decision making the move from Burnley back to his old club. It was obviously, there's no doubt, it was a difficult week for everybody involved. And uh, as you know, I'm a football person, and, and not being able to be out in that training ground every day, then it kind of drags on. But yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the challenge. Have to obviously qualify that by saying it was a, an unbelievable wrench to leave the football club because everything we built up and developed and the feeling I have for everybody there. But as I said, I think uh, in balance when I've looked at it, I'm here and really excited at, at the challenge ahead of us. When all was said and done, we had to take the, certainly try to take the emotion out of it and make 
uh, what we felt myself and my staff was a football decision and, and when all said and done there's been so much written and said about it and really that's what it came down to now I understand totally the uh, the sense of heart or disappointment that, that the Burnley fans would feel what we know in football there's two things that happen as a football manager you do well and you move on or you don't and you're moved on and I think uh, that's, that's ultimately what's happened I mean very emotional no doubt about it still am there's no getting away from that but it's such an exciting challenge here and, and that's what we have to look forward to Owen oh, oh, nice. Cole we wish him well in his new career at Bolton we're talking football with Ian myself Simon and Ollie now Last week turned into a damp squib. There we were, all set for the big Manchester Carling Cup semi-final. And then that happened outside the window. So it's still in the air. We haven't even got the first leg behind us yet. But what's your gut feeling about that semi? I am so nervous about that semi. And I was last week. And in a way, I'm sorry to admit it, and I really shouldn't. I was quite glad it was called off because I was dreading it so much. Especially after Sunday, after the result on the Sunday before... I'm nervous because it means so much. We, we, we lose it and it's, and, it's, and it's kind of like, I think that's going to be the start of the pendulum swinging the other way for Man City. We win it and I think it will give us the confidence that we really need at the moment to go and, and play a lot better than we have been, doing, uh, have been doing. So I think there's a lot in that game. I think it's a very tough game. I think in terms of football, I think Man City might have the edge at the moment. They're more composed and more together and we're not... But there is that, it's now going to be played at Old Trafford, it's going to be a home game for Man United and it's the theatre of dreams and anything can happen on Derby Day in the theatre of dreams. Well, I have this theory, Simon, that City probably, well, they definitely need it more, but I just think probably they might want it more because it's been so long since they've won anything, you've got to get that toehold back on the record books. Well, I think the postponement actually did City a favour because they had quite a few injuries, particularly at the back, and they've got extra time to get players back who would have missed the game last week. They've, um, the other thing is as well, Adi Bayoko could now feature now that he's pulled out of the African nations. I mean, obviously it was a tragedy that what happened in, in Angola, but they could, they could even have Adi Bayor back for, for both games, which would give United a problem. The other thing as well is, Ferguson had the perfect excuse not to play the kids against City after what happened against Leeds. I think now there would have been a reaction from United. I think they would have really been at it that last week in the first game at Eastlands. I think the fact that City have bought a little bit more time could do them a favour. I, see. I, think, I think losing to Leeds would have been a huge emotional backlash from the players and it would have been a really spirited game and that's what we would have had going for us in that game. And, you know, um, Adam Bior coming up against our defence at the moment. Cool, blimey, I don't know if we could deal with that, really. Um, Rio and Vidic not about and when they are they're really not on form and I don't think they're up to dealing with someone like that and, and yeah it's scary so that's why I'm really nervous about it City had big problems at the back last week they had a lot of centre-halves missing through injury I think the only fit centre-half was Vincent Company. it would have been interesting to see how Mancini handled that he would have played alongside him he was he was spared that problem by the, by the, by the freezing weather Right Ian you have to bring a note of balance I've got a nervous red <clears throat> yeah Teetering on the brink of cocky blue here, so <laughs> you know, a balance to the proceedings. I think, I think what they're sort of saying is true. Uh, the reaction to the Leeds game would have undoubtedly been there. Sir Alex Ferguson's United teams are notorious for sort of having a bit of a backlash after a bad performance, as bad as the Leeds game was. Um, I, I think as well, it could affect now what team he selects. There, there was de undoubtedly going to be a stronger than, than expected team playing against City last week had the game been then. Whereas now perhaps if United's form picks up in the league over the next couple of games, you might look at it and think, well, it's an opportunity to play some of the kids. Obviously, some of the kids had played against Leeds the Saturday before. So it would be interesting to see what sort of United team he puts out because that, obviously that can affect the balance of the tie. And whether there's a stronger team put out in the second leg, uh, at, at the first leg doesn't quite go United's way, then he's obviously got that to play with as well, perhaps. Right, we've only got a few seconds, so let me... You're nervous. Nervous enough to lose it, do you think? No, not nervous enough to lose it. As I say, anything can happen in the theatre of dreams. Could you imagine if, if United went to Eastlands with a, with a young team, with a weakened team, and lost the game 3-0? The second leg... I had a nightmare about be, that last the night, The second actually. leg would be... <laughs> oh, you and your nightmares, don't be a girl. <laughs> now, in a moment, we're going to be talking to a man who wrote an article that suggests Manchester United, in the summer, might clear out Berbatov... Tosic, Nani and Anderson. How do I know that? 
because it was him. We're going to be talking about Manchester United, part three of the Football Debate Show. Make sure you're part of it. That's uh, today at channelm.co.uk. Fire them in and we'll put your questions to the lot. See you in two.